Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. It's a beautiful time. And if I told you that I know who is here, would you really understand that? So many times you have heard me say, I know who is in the chair. I know who is listening. There are no secrets from God. I am from the great central source. I am a piece of the whole like you are. Because I've never been a human being, I do not have the biases that you do of corporealness or 3 d -ness. But I have the love for you based upon the work that you're doing. Now, before we even begin, I'm going to alert the listener to something that those in the chairs already know. That my partner had a difficult time getting here today. Now, there is a saying that says there are no accidents. The saying is a metaphysical development of the belief in synchronicity and co-creation all having purpose. Sometimes when challenge happens, as it often does in duality, you might criticize it as being inappropriate or wrong or even suffering. But there are no accidents. And so my partner has said to me three times today, why? Why did he miss his flight? Why did he have to take a two-hour bus to an airport he had never been to and get on a plane to a city he had never visited to be picked up and drive two more hours to be six hours late to a meeting? He's never missed a meeting, not on this continent, and he didn't miss this one. But in the process of getting here, he asked why. If there are things to be learned, what are they? And why should he experience this and drag all of those in the room with him? So that this is now a night meeting and it's almost 11 p.m. I'll give you the answer. It's a metaphor and a lesson. It's not for him. It's for all of you. And I'm going to revisit this because it is the theme of this channel. The theme you've heard before. Things are not always as they seem. Here is the metaphor, and it is for the day, it is for the time on this planet, it is for many of you to see and understand. All of you in the room held a ticket for this event. All of you in the room, when you purchased the ticket, felt you knew when things were going to happen. Because of the linearity of how you live your life and the clock and what you expect, because of the protocol of what meetings are like, you saw yourself in advance here at a certain time during the day and leaving when it was over. You scheduled your time appropriately when you would leave the drive time to home. All of that. And then suddenly it changed. How many of you were tempted to say, because it was not as expected, 
I'm not going. In this room, very few. But that's not the way it is in life. The start of this meeting happened after the time the other one was supposed to end. It wasn't just late, dear ones. It was over. And then it began. How many of you hold a ticket for something that you have been asking for for a long time? You paid your dues, dear ones. You got it in your hand. And then it didn't happen. I'm talking to a lot of you listening to me now and both present and not present in this room. And how do you feel about it when the things have not transpired as you thought they should? In fact, it's gone beyond being late. It looks like they're not going to happen. The healing that has been promised to you, the associations, the business, the reawakening. There are so many. I know who you are. And in linearity, you are disappointed. The things around you are not unfolding as you thought they would, as you were expected they would all your life, perhaps. You come to this point, and there's a change. And you're sitting there by yourself holding the ticket. And you don't know why it's happened. And here's what I want to tell you for this instance. I want you to notice what this metaphor was today. You were asked to wait. And it didn't happen and it didn't happen. You were asked to trust that it would and it didn't happen and then way after the fact of when it was even supposed to be over, there was still the chance it wouldn't happen. And then it did. For those in the room in this tiny little metaphor, the entire meeting has now happened and you are at the end of it. And you can look backwards and you can say to yourself, I'm glad I didn't go home. You can say, I'm glad I waded through it. I had the ticket. And I got what it came for. I want to make a statement to you. That God loves you enough to honor the ticket. Maybe not in a time frame that you like. Or that you expect. But you wouldn't have the ticket if it weren't supposed to happen. Do not despair. These things are not always what you expect. Can you go the whole route? Can you wait even after the meeting was over? To have what you expected. I'm going to get back to that. I want to review a little bit of history and fill in the cracks of the profundities of this shift on the planet that are happening. As I said last night, I have arrived in 1989 triggered by 1987 harmonic convergence. There's so much more than that. You began to change early and we saw it. The harmonic convergence was a result of profound potential. When I came in, I gave you many predictions Almost all of them have now resulted in manifestation. But they weren't prophecy. And I want you to understand the difference. 
You have today's technology which allows you to see storms coming a thousand miles away. You can prepare a week in advance for something that may hit you. And you'll be ready. If somebody were to do that 200 years ago without the instruments and say a storm is coming in a week and then it did, they would be put on a pedestal. They would have shamanic abilities. They would be a holy person who could predict. So what was the difference between a shaman and a meteorologist? <laughs> And the answer is that the meteorologist could see it coming and tell about the potentials from a distance. 1987, that's what happened. We could see it coming. And in 89, when I came in and began the channeling, telling you the shift is at hand, the battle is at hand, Light versus dark will be what you face from now for a few years. You will have no Armageddon. The magnetic grid will shift and change. These were not prophecies. They were potentials based on a long range that we could see. We saw how, muni how humanity was, was shifting and changing in ways you could never see independently. For we had a picture of billions of souls all at once. I want you to understand that because of what I'm going to tell you next. We still have these potentials. We can still see what's coming based upon the same principles that allowed us to give you the first prophecies we gave you, which were potentials. We wrote about the indigo children because they were forerunners. Before the shift occurred, humanity started to change. The DNA actually within these children was different than yours. And it was different not in a chemical way, but in a quantum way. You're not going to see it in the microscope, dear ones. But you can see it in the actions and the consciousness that's represented. This was not a prophecy. We saw it coming based upon the potentials of human consciousness. Now the indigo children, they represented a slightly changed human DNA that we told you was quantum. Based upon the magnetic grid shift, which is also quantum, and a consciousness shift of the planet, Someday you will see that human consciousness has physics and it is quantum as well. All of this to say one thing, they relate to one another and we saw it coming. And it was, and it did. Isn't it interesting that more than 10 years before a potential shift on the planet, that the kids started to change anyway? Before December 21st, the middle of the precession of the equinoxes, way before it, the beginning of the shift represented in the children of the planet began anyway. Now, I want you to pay attention to this because this is the way it works. There is an anticipation factor it has begun already. There are those human beings whose DNA is working above 33% and you're going to recognize them and see them clearly. And some of them will take the form of children geniuses and there's going to be far too many for coincidence. It's not a prediction, dear ones. 
It's a potential. One of the attributes of an increased DNA functionality is increased wisdom, increased intelligence, and the ability to see system resolution faster. Some of the indigo children already have that ability. Some of you are starting to receive it without having to come in again. That's what I want to talk to you about. What do you think calibration and recalibration is really about? Come on. Is that to make you feel better? How do you feel? Because it's not done and you know it's not done. There are gifts being given to you right now before the battle of dark and light has even actually begun. We are changing your DNA because you've asked for it because you passed this marker and the result, dear ones, is that corporally you are uncomfortable. This is all coming back. Did you hear me? How many of you lost your joy to live? Don't despair. The ones not in this room necessarily, the ones listening, don't despair. That joy is going to come back. How many of you just have had a bad day and remember it and went into perhaps a, a minor depression only to have it all come back later? And in retrospect, you, you said, wow, I'm glad I didn't make any decisions when I was depressed. <laughs> well, I want you to think about that because you need to hear that right now. This is not the time for some of you to be making decisions. Not only is it coming back, it's coming back and doubling. And we've said that before. Your gifts are being increased because your DNA is going to work far more than 33. You know what 44 is going to be? Long before the Tibetans are going to tell you, I'll tell you. I'll give you a hint. Four is indeed a Gaia number, and that is, is something to look at. Is there a, perhaps a link to Gaia that you haven't seen before? Let me ask you a question. Why are the cetaceans in the Gaia group? That's just a little hint. <laughs> what is four and four together? Manifestation. What is it that you might manifest when you get to 44? I will tell you that. Peace on earth. That is the potential. That's not the storm coming. That's the sun coming out. I've never told you that before, did I? See, things are not always as they seem. Things clear. And I can reveal things that perhaps I couldn't reveal last week because the potentials are that much grander today than they were last week. You got a battle in front of you, and we talked about it last night. And the battle is of dark and light, and it's profound, and you're starting to see it on the planet. Now you see the faces, now it's given a name, now you know how to fight it, or do you? Or do you? My partner has mentioned to the crowds many times that it is time for good news on broadcast. That it has taken hold on what you have called the internet before. And that various videos go viral that are heartwarming and beautiful. Going viral, my partner says, means tens of millions of people see them over and over and tell their friends they're heartwarming they make you feel good stories of courage and heroicness children doing things 
the rescue of animals, animals talking to humans, all manner of things. We told you that it's time for this to hit mainstream television. I give you a prediction. The one who decides to fund this for the first time will have the same kind of fame that the one did who decided to start something called Google or something called Facebook. Paradigms which had never been seen on the planet and others told them nobody could do it, nobody would be interested and it wouldn't work. And today you see it, not only did it work, it has become a paradigm. The one who decides to fund the new good news network will go down in history as changing the planet. The one who had the insight and the vision to know how new humans are thinking and make a commercial endeavor about it. Make no mistake, I am not telling you that there is supposed to be a television channel that is new age or that has cry on. Hardly. Just let it be like the internet. Let it show the clips and talk about the stories and bring in the people and discuss it. And it will attract tens of millions of people away from the news, away from the horror. And the first people to see that this is going to be working are the advertisers. <laughs> That's why it's going to work. This is the challenge. The first one to have the courage to fund this endure the jabs of ridicule and laughter <laughs> as they move the paradigm of the planet will be famous. There's someone listening right now and they're saying something and I want to, re I want to repeat it. Now, if somebody's listening now, I don't mean in the room. This is a hard concept for you, isn't it? But there's somebody in your future listening to this and I know what they're going to say. Now that is not prophecy because I know who they are. And they will say, Cryon, this is ignorance and innocence, naivety. You've got this vast army building that is evil, that's given itself a name, that thinks nothing of murder on a grand scale. And you're going to fight it with videos of cute animals. <laughs> That's not going to work, they'll say. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Oh, yes, it is. You don't know what I know. Things are not always as you, as you think they're going to be or as they seem because you don't know about the benevolence factor. You don't know how light can spread. When humans start thinking a certain way and how it catches on and almost becomes contagious and what that does to other humans, what the broadcasts of these things worldwide can do to regular humanity, It's not just what you think in 3D. Let me tell you how it might work. Now listen, you have an enemy in front of you. Do you want to, how, do you want to know how to win this battle? Do you want to know how to slay that enemy? Don't kill him. Do not take life. Don't become them. Let's get smart. Cut off their funding. And you say that's impossible. There are too many with too much money who will fund them. Huh. Not if the population of the planet objects. They won't. The part of the population that's looking at the channel with cute animals. 
Uh, the part of the population that respects life and loves life and loves one another and sees the potential for a peaceful earth and what it might mean. What it might mean to the Middle East to finally solve. Maybe it'll take a generation, but to solve that ancient hatred. Cut off their funding. It's not going to be that hard because the funding has to come from somewhere. And that somewhere doesn't just sprout from the ground, dear ones. It has to be approved. It has to pass through banks. It has to buy things in order for that darkness to exist and fight. And I'm telling you, that's the source. Common sense will tell you that's the source. Now, I've just presented something I've never said before. The benevolence factor is real. It's an amplification of the light in human consciousness. It is infectious. For the new human will gravitate toward peaceful things, not toward drama. Slowly, you will see certain kinds of television programs reduce their population, their popularity. The advertisers will see it too. And they won't want to fund any more programs that show people arguing for fun. Watch this. I want you to see something that is not a prediction, but a potential. Now I want to get back to the ticket. <laughs> In 1987, you might say humanity purchased a ticket for a meeting. And the meeting would have a name the New Jerusalem. And some of you know what I'm talking about. The city on the hill in peace. As goes Israel, goes the earth. And that is the focus. And that is the ticket that you have. Peace. And you've waited, and you've waited, and you've waited, and you've waited. And you were almost there, he thought. And suddenly it got worse. Not did it just get worse. It got funded. <laughs> they can't win, dear ones. Because you've got a ticket. How long is it worth waiting for? And what are you going to do? Are you just going to hold it in your hand? Are you going to suffer through it? Are you going to be a victim wondering when it's going to happen? Or are you going to hold it up high and say, we deserve this and it's coming. Let's go. Let's figure out how to defeat the darkness. We'll start with yourselves. Becoming more gentle to one another. Practicing on a micro level what the macro consciousness of the planet will have to learn. How long will it take? How long will you wait? The next time you're born, yes, when you reincarnate, if this earth is not yet in peace, I'm going to tell you esoterically, metaphorically, metaphysically, when you are born, you'll be holding a ticket. You will come in with this attribute. This is what you're going to want as a child. This is going to be your passion. And everything you see around you, if it doesn't agree with this, you're going to fight it. And you're going to fight it with that which you know works 
integrity, honesty, gentleness, compassion, action. It's infectious. That's the factor nobody expects because it's not in 3D. It's not a prophecy. It's a fact. It's coming. And we see it. You've got the tickets. Don't put them away. Don't tear them up. Don't be discouraged. Hang in there. Because things are not always as they seem. I know your name. And I'm proud of you. And so it is.